I have here three apples and I want to compare them according to many possibilities. One of them is their size, just to make things simple. I could compare them according to their weight or age or aroma or whatever. And if I had the measurements uh, on some scale, the size is measured in cubic inches, I call them S1, S2, S3, and I compare this with that, and I say it's S1 to S1 over S1. How much bigger is this than that, I'm asking? And this is S1 over S2. How much bigger is this than that? S1 over S3. How much bigger is the second than the first? It is not bigger. It's a reciprocal of that. And so on. You have ones here, and you have reciprocal values here. You see, I assume when you have intangible, you don't have measurements that you go subtracting them, so I really have to estimate their relative. So let me show you, this is a scientific process in which I have two things, two apples. When I make comparisons, I identify the smaller of the two and estimate how many times larger is the larger one with respect to the smaller on that property. Now that's a risky business, you say. Well, who knows how many to be precise because you studied engineering and you feel very sexy about getting it down to the nth decimal place. But actually, you and I are living entities and we make decisions all the time and we don't seem to show that concern. There was a mathematician by the name of Wilkinson at Oxford. Uh, he proved in 1965. And he and I never met. He died in 1986. But he talked about positive matrices and he showed that if you perturbed their values by a small amount, your final priorities, I'm going to show you, are perturbed by a small amount, so you don't have to worry. If you allow a certain margin of, of, uh, of error, or of, of imprecision, I don't want to call it error. So let's go now and look at, uh, oh, wait a minute. So really, let me jump the gun here and come back. So let's look at the apples, and so there's one, and let's say this is twice bigger than that, and this is six times bigger than that, so this would be half, because it's two, one half. You, you, because, by the way, if you take a small and a large one, you have to always use the small one as a unit to break down the larger one to say what fraction of the small one. There is no way in which I take the small one, I take the big one and break it down, it's an infinite number breaking down to say what fraction of it is this. So there's a bias in our thinking to always go from the smaller as a unit to the larger to decide that the smaller is a fraction by how many times fraction of the larger. So in this case, notice that I said this is six times bigger and this twice bigger. Six over two is three. So I say this three times bigger to be consistent. But if I were giving judgments, I would be guessing and I would not be consistent. I will talk about that. But it turns out when you're consistent, and to get the priorities, what fraction of the total is apple one? Six tenths of all the apples are apple one, three tenths and one tenth. How do I do that? I take any column, uh, six of three, nine, one, ten. I made it simple here. So six over, you divide by the total. Three. Or you could take this two and a third, two and one is three and a third, you divide two by three and a third, you get six tenths. Or you do this one and you get those again. Or you add these like this, and divide the sum nine by the total, again, you get six tenths. So there are four ways in this case, depending. Uh, just in, because the time is short, in case I forget, it turns out you could show that the human mind is not capable of comparing too many things. It becomes so inconsistent, it's unreliable. You can only compare in groups about seven things. So if you have umpteen things, you really have to break them down into groups and you compare these and you get their priorities and then take one of them and compare them with the others and when you finish prioritizing you divide by its weight so it gets a one and you multiply by its weight from here and all the others so the two become comparable but you cannot compare too many things uh, I'd be happy to I mean this book here tells you about that but uh, by the way I want to tell you that this book has been translated by 12 languages five in Asia, five in Europe, and two in the Middle East, uh, Persian and Arabic. In Asia, it's in uh, Korean, uh, Chinese, uh, Indonesian, Japanese, and Thai, it's somebody from Thailand. So it's, uh, when I first developed theory, uh, published my book by McGraw-Hill, a vice president of a company in California, Widesworth came to see me and said, we all like your ideas, but can you write them in English instead of math? took me two years 
to, uh, I found an editor in Boston to spell it out that what I'm telling you is understandable. <laughs>